Hey guys, Jeff here, and we're in the basement project again. Today we are talking about drywall. We're gonna drywall our ceilings. I like to go rent tools. So we've got ourselves a drywall panel lift here. We've got a nine foot ceiling, and I'm gonna go through all the different steps that you wanna take because it's not just slap it up and walk away. There's actually an order of doing things. There are tips and tricks that I can share with you that'll make the process easy, and you're not gonna lose your hose bib. You're not gonna get confused as to where the pot lights are supposed to be drilled out. Let's just jump into this. First of all, what you wanna do is you wanna make a map. This is a project book, and in this book, I've got maps for everything in this basement. This one has just drawn out the space of the room, location of the lights, the distance between them, okay, distance off the walls. When we're all finished, we want to drill out the pot lights. We don't want to do it as we go because we want to be able to paint the ceiling. Every time we cut a hole in the ceiling and you paint, you're pulling more dirt into the paint as you go. It's bad enough we're going to have a couple of heat runs that are going to be exposed, but we don't want to have all the pot lights. It just takes forever to get a good looking finish. So we're going to make a map that'll solve that problem. Next thing you want to do is grab yourself a marker. Because the way we do strapping and the way we always do strapping, it's just not continuous every 16 inches, okay? Because we're installing perpendicular to it. So you want to find your strapping and you want to mark your vapor barrier with your marker everywhere where you're strapping, where your screw lines are, all right? Nice and simple. Next step is inspect. Is it all nailed up? Are the nails all flush? Or they did not need another shot. This is your quality control moment here because if the nails aren't all sunken in, then when you install your drywall, you're gonna have problems. Remember, construction isn't about getting it 50% right. It's about doing everything perfect. So now we've got our strapping all good. I inspected all my nails. There we go. Now I'm ready to install. Now, one other thing, you wanna take a look for plumbing lines. One more time, really quick, just visualize. Here's my line. It's uh, on top of the strapping and I'm going to here. Make sure you're not using screws that are too long for the job just because they're handy. It's the wrong time to use a three inch screw. Get yourself a drywall screw that's one and a quarter if you're using half inch drywall or one and five eighths if you're using five eighths drywall. That's it. You wanna keep it the right size because we actually have a building code for how we do all of our mechanical work. And if you're installing drywall, you wanna follow the building code for the length of screw for your drywall so you don't accidentally penetrate a water line or electrical line and wreck one of your circuits. That would be detrimental. And we are here to move forward. It's time to close. You don't want to close and then a week or two from now you come back and go, hey, how come the lights aren't working? <laughs> That's the wrong time to find out that you put a screw through a wire. Installing drywall is really simple. All you got to do is measure at the end and then four feet over. All right. Get yourself a tape with a magnet on the end. It'll actually hold on to the soffit and then you can measure across. My gap is exactly 130 and a half inches. I checked four feet out already and it's just a touch wider. So we're gonna cut it 130 and a quarter because we're gonna put the ceiling up first. We wanna have a little wiggle room because we're gonna be putting drywall on the sides after to close the gaps. Don't drive yourself nuts trying to do drywall like a finished carpenter. Cut it a little small on purpose and then after you put the sides on, all the gaps will be gone. That is how you do it properly. So part of a good drywall job is organizing your materials. We got our four foot wide sheets by 12 foot, all stacked right here in the same room we're installing them in. We're gonna run our tape over here, 130 and a half. Grab yourselves a razor knife. Now this is a drywall square, it sits on top of the drywall. The way you cut drywall is really simple. Extend the blade to expose the tip because that's all we're doing. We're just cutting the paper. Don't cut all the way through the drywall. Ah. Use your toe, hold it against the board so it's not moving around. And you set the knife on the paper. Okay, turn it from the other way around. Finish scoring your paper. Now lift and twist, and then cut it from the back side. And remember, all we're cutting is the paper. All right, now's the fun part. Now you gotta put it on the lift. <laughs> Real quick, the lift, it's got these little locking mechanisms on it. We're pulling out the arms. Okay, you wanna get that done. That ought to be enough right there. The secret here is that you have to install the white paper facing the machine. <clears throat> Here we go. Up and on. Okay, from there, we just flatten it out. And we should be somewhat in the middle, okay? As long as it's somewhat in the middle, we'll be fine. Now, crawl underneath here. Now we're just gonna crank it up, get it out of your way. Get over to the wall. Okay, this is where the money is. So this all moves around. You wanna have the wheel facing you. And then you can push this all the way to the other wall. Pull the lever, that back down just a touch. All right, here we go. Let's drive it into position. Come on, baby, let's go.
Hold on a second, boys. I need this out of balance on the other side. There, that'll work. Because this is still floating. There we go. Okay. We're in. Now this is the point where we stop. A lot of people run into trouble with the first sheet. If the room isn't square, it won't fit right. So what I recommend is you can measure off 46 inches, put a marker on each of the sides, and then put the first sheet more in the middle of the room. That's a great way to get started. And then you can measure if your walls aren't square. This happens to be a brand new build and everything here is relatively square. So we're in good shape. The only thing we wanna do now is just take a level or two by four and push the edge right up against the wall if you have any gaps to close. Okay, and if it's too tight, hold the wheel, pull that, let a bit of tension off, and that'll make it easier to manipulate. There we go. Now we're gonna crank it nice and tight, make sure that all these corners are gonna screw up without a problem, and then we're gonna screw in the edges, okay? We wanna get, on a 12-foot sheet, you wanna get about 12 screws. One screw for every foot, so six on the front, six on the back. That'll be enough to hold it in place. Now you can see that screw went in too deep. So you can use a regular screw gun, but you gotta have a lot of control to get a perfect depth. It is gonna drive you nuts. You can also get a bit, it's called a dimpler bit, costs about two or three bucks. Goes to the end here and it does the same thing as this tool. This is a drywall screw gun. Here we go. All right, what you do is you adjust the depth on the collar so that when you put in a screw, you don't get a click. If the screw's sticking out too far, you're gonna hit the edge, and that's not deep enough. So you can go too deep, not deep enough, or just perfect. And the difference is nanometers. Once you get a fair amount of screws in there, lower this down, get it out of the way, okay? All right. Make sure that you get five screws for every strap. One on each end, one in the middle, and then split the difference, okay? Anywhere where you miss the strapping, you pull the screw out, you can't leave it in. Take the back of your four and one, four inch knife, and just dent another hole. That way you're ready for mudding when it's time to do that. Now, let's get into using some roto zipping. We'll show you some new tools. So whenever you get a heat duct, the secret here is gonna be, we're going to be roto zipping the inside of the duct. This one's actually attached and screwed to the framing, flush to the finish. What you do is from the middle, you draw an arrow, and the distance to the center of the duct. Now it's a six inch line, so it's three inches. That's simple. Then when your drywall goes on, you can plunge the hole and zip it out without any difficulty at all, knowing the distance from this point and the location relative to the wall. You don't have to pull out a measuring tape for that. All right, now listen, if your protrusions aren't right at the edge of the drywall and you need to measure off, okay, then do that, get a mark, and just put the mark close to a piece of strapping, right? So let's say my hole was right here, my duct. All right, I would then measure off 31 inches, five inches over. So I'd go like this, measure my five, make my arrow, and then write my number. That's my mark, off that arrow, out 31. It's that simple. Because you're dealing with something that's five or six inches round, it's okay to not be exact and precise. You'll see when we wrote a zip that the tool does the work for you. Now, let's see if we're still square. Let's use the knee and the magnet. Yeah, we're still the same. 130 and a half. How about that? All right, the secret to using a rotary cutout tool is a little tip right here. It's not a cutting surface, the last eighth of an inch. That is just a guide. So when it goes up into the hole, it can find the surface to run against, okay, like a pilot. That's how that works. So the, the secret really is to set the depth, 
relative to what you're cutting against. A little bit of experience, you practice with these, and you can do a much better job than I just did. The best condition for having ductwork is if the ductwork is hanging just a little lower than the strapping, and you cut it out, and then you finish screwing. Having it flush makes it a little bit more difficult, but we got it done, and the cap that goes over top is huge, so we're gonna be okay. So just to recap, before you put up your drywall, make sure you check for electrical and plumbing, put metal brackets over anything where things are exposed to danger based on the length of the screw you're gonna use, use the right length of screw, measure your space, and cut your drywall just a little bit shorter than what you need to make things a little easier. Have everything butted tight against each other. Use the longest piece of drywall you can to avoid having extra joints that you have to tape because right now I've got 12 by 12 and all I've got is two straight joints to tape. That is super quick and it'll make your life a lot easier. Make sure you're using a depth setter on your screw gun so that you don't have to fiddle around with all the screws. And if you do make a mistake, fix it as you go. One other thing I can show you is this. We have one nail in the strapping that wasn't sunk down enough, okay? Now, there's more than one school of thought on how to fix this. Bottom line is, it's just drywall. So I've got an extra screw that I missed. I'm gonna pull that out, take the, the metal edge on your four inch. Again, make a dent. That's the solution there. If I've got this from the backside, it's a bulge, right? I can do this. I can hammer it in until it's a dent that needs to be filled. Doesn't even matter, as long as you don't break the surface of the paper, that'll work just fine. All right, well, welcome to the next day. As you can tell, we got a lot done, but in typical Jeff fashion, you know, I made notes on my drywall to tell me where the heat run was gonna be when I forgot to roto zip it out. So today I gotta climb up here and make a mess. I got my site all cleaned up, but now I'm gonna go and make a big dust cloud. Typical, eh? It's important when you're working, when you have a system, even if you forget to do something, because you got a system, you can always go back and find the hole. If I didn't have a system, I would never know where that thing was. And then I'd be pulling a sheet of drywall down and then measuring it off and marking it all over again. Having a system is key to staying organized. I'm just gonna confirm my measurement from the marking over to this hole, zip out a small hole to confirm that the heating duct is there. And then I'm gonna go and rip the big hole. Just a quick tip, the shaft on this is smooth. It does not cut. And then when I first started, I had the guard too low. So I was trying to cut drywall with a smooth shaft. Make sure you set your guard high enough that you're in the cutting wheel, okay? And be easy on yourself. This ductwork is incredibly flexible. So even when you get the pilot on it, it tends to wobble. It's not a real big deal. Most people, until you get really, really proficient with that tool, are gonna run into this problem. You're gonna have a little bit of an oval because the metal will bend underneath the weight of your... The way you solve that, just have a little bit of expansion foam here. This does two things, which is why I love expansion foam. One, it's going to seal it in place. Okay, that'll hold that nice and flush so that when you put in the device after the fact with the, um, the damper on it, okay, it's not going to be falling out of the ceiling because it'll be nice and secure. The pipe isn't going to move up and down. You'll get a great fit. After this foam is dry, you cut it off with a knife. You can put the tape and the mud over it. You're going to have a beautiful looking ceiling. Anyway, ah, that is how you do drywall in a 2,000 square foot basement. Have the right tools, have the right equipment, make great notes. <laughs> make sure you got a map for your electrical. And if you tie all that system together, you'll be able to have a great result and you're not going to lose your lights, your plugs, or your heat exhaust. Cheers.